Good morning, Amy. So today we're doing simple and elegant. And I wanted to start with a flower that to me is simple and elegant all on its own, and that are fresh cut tulips. I mean, they're a great choice because we see so many in yards. They're wonderfully inexpensive when they're in season. Um, and I wanted to do two different designs using the same materials but in two different containers. So what I've got here is just a basic 10 stem bundle of tulips. And I've got this wonderful bubble bowl, which if you've seen me talk about them before, is one of my absolute favorite containers. I'm going to start out by just adding a pinch of water into the bottom. You don't need more than an inch, maybe two tops. And then we're going to take advantage of the fact that tulips have such flexible stems. And what we're going to do is just give them a fresh cut on the bottom. Start by putting that end in the water and then just curling the tulip inside of the bowl. You can just keep working around. If, if the tulips have leaves that you're not crazy about the way they look, maybe they're a little big, you can certainly feel free to pull them off. We just keep working around the bowl. This can be done with tulips. It can be done with a lot of different flowers, but the key is that flexible stem. Things like um, calla lilies are wonderful choices, orchids. Feel free to try a couple things out. Um, if your tulips are a little bit resistant and a little stiff, what you can do is it's OK to leave them actually out of water for a little while and let the stem soften up so that you've got a little bit more flexibility. Once you give them a fresh cut and put them back within the bowl, they'll take up the water again, and they will last, no problem. It's kind of tough love, I guess, maybe, is a way to think about it, but it gets the job done. So I've got those tulips wound within there. And then what you can do to give it just a little bit of a finishing detail is using this product called Bear Grass. And what I'm going to do to give this a slightly different spin this time is thread it with pearls, which adds, I think, just a little touch of elegance to things. Now, these are just pearls you can buy at a craft store, but what you need to make sure is that the opening on the pearls is large enough <laughs> to thread the bear grass. You know, if you're using typical pearls that you'd use a lot for beaded jewelry, often that center is just too small to allow the grass to run through that, and you'll wind up breaking a lot of grass and not having a lot of fun. It can be kind of a frustrating project that way. Oh, come on. There we go. All right, so once I've got a couple of those threaded on there, I'm going to take the stems of the bear grass, give it just a nice even cut, and I'm going to lay that in there, kind of swirling in the same direction. So you're just going to see little tucks here and there along the sides where those pearls are going to be pressed up against the glass. So it adds just a touch of elegance. You could even take a few of the pearls and kind of scatter them to float them in the bottom among the water is a really pretty little detail on there. Oop, I have pearls running away on me. So just a fun little spin on it, um, a little touch of elegance, and something a little bit more unexpected. So now, taking that same concept, we're going to do something that if this were to be used as your table centerpiece, this would be used as your buffet centerpiece, something with a little bit more height to it. This is a 24-inch glass cylinder. And this one couldn't be easier, but yet we get a lot of comments on it. So what we're going to do is take just a basic pearl pin, and we're going to actually run them crossways through the bottom. So I've got one going that way, and another going in the opposite direction. So you can see how I've made a little cross there. Once we've got that in place, tulips get dropped in. Again, we're going to do the same thing with our second tulip, but this one we want to be at a slightly different height, so I'm going to go a little shorter so that we've got two staggered heights going on in there. And again, same idea, cross hatching back and forth. And sometimes you've got to wiggle them around to make a little bit of room for each other. Down they go. And now we're going to add a little bit of water just down into the bottom. Just enough, because having a little bit of water in there helps provide cushion for the weight. Because what we're going to do is submerge these flowers. So I'm going to pick this up and very gently drop in some handfuls of river rock. You have to be a little bit brave with this. It will happen on occasion where if you drop the rock just at the wrong angle, you'll crack the cylinder. But do it in your, over your kitchen floor, where if you have a little water, it's not a problem. But for the most part, once you've done it a couple of times, get a little braver with it. All right, kind of shimmy them around a little bit to make sure that they're 
evenly distributed over those pins, because that's what's going to hold them down. And then our finishing touch is just adding the rest of the water. And hopefully the tulips are going to stay exactly where you want them to. And the water has this beautiful effect of magnifying the flowers and adding this kind of silvery hue from the reflection. This is also lovely if you wanted to add a floating candle into the top of the cylinder. Um, just a really simple and popular choice, and it just has a lot of drama to it with very, very few materials and not a lot of effort either, which is a great combination.